Hi, welcome back to Mama Sanity. Thank you for tuning in to me once again. Um, this week, I want to talk more about Be The Change. I know, um, like I said, that's what my background is on my Twitter account. Um, and I talked a little bit last week about to be the change that you want to see in the world. And so that's kind of, um, I'm going to read um, three stories to you that I got off Pinterest that are kind of um, encouragement. Um, so it's, it's not only encouragement, but it's like these people are trying to be the change they, that we all want to see in the world. And it all starts with you. So here we go. There is a nine-year-old boy sitting at his desk, and all of a sudden there's a puddle between his feet and the front of his pants are wet. He thinks his heart is going to stop because he cannot possibly imagine how this happened. It has never happened before, and he knows that when the boys find out, he will never hear the end of it. When the girls find out, they'll never speak to him again as long as he lives. The boy believes his heart is going to stop. He puts his head down and prays a prayer. Dear God, this is an emergency. I need your help now. Five minutes from now, I'm dead meat. He looks up from his prayer and here comes the teacher with a look in her eyes that she's that says she, he has been discovered. As the teacher is walking toward him, a classmate named Susie carrying a goldfish bowl that is filled with water. Susie trips in front of the teacher and unexplicitly dumps the bowl of water into the boy's lap. The boy pretends to be angry, but all the while he is grateful. And he is saying to himself, thank you, Lord, thank you. Now all of a sudden, instead of being the object of ridicule, the boy is the object of sympathy. The teacher rushes him downstairs and gives him gym shorts while his pants dry. All the other children on their hands and knees cleaning around his desk, the sympathy was wonderful, but the ridicule that should have been for him was now transferred to someone else. Susie. She tries to help, but they tell her to get out. You've done enough, klutz. Finally, at the end of the day, as they were waiting for the bus, the boy walks out over to Susie and whispers, You did that on purpose, didn't you? She whispered back, I wet my pants once too, you know. So just a little bit of, you know, it's, it's just the simple things in life, you know, and that is a quote that I heard a long time ago when I was a little girl um, from my brother, and it was so funny back then because he was like, I just want the simple things in life, and it's just kind of stuck with me, and that's, this is, this is something super simple, the other stories are something simple, but it's just helping somebody else out in need in any possible way. Next story. Yesterday I went to the drive through ATM at my bank and I was putting in my card in. I noticed where the money comes out there was some money left in it. I reached down and took it. It was five hundred dollars. I drove around to the bank and took it in. I told the teller what happened and, she, and handed her the money. She wouldn't take it and she called the manager over. She said, what do you expect me to do with it? Well, maybe you can check and see who was the one right before me. He t he, the manager took the name and number, my name and number. Today, I received a phone call from the bank and it was a three-way call, so the owner of the money was on the other line. Her name was Edith. She was 92 years old and she was taking the money out for rent and her rent was $480. And she wanted to give me the leftover $20 for a reward. It was all the money she had for the rest of the month. I told her absolutely not and have a nice day. After I got off the phone, I got to thinking about it. I called the bank manager and told him to transfer $200 from my account to her account. The co a co-worker heard this and said he would chip in $100. About an hour later, the manager called me and told me that all the tellers what he did and that came with another $300 to go with the other money for Edith. So today was a good day. I really like that story because it's not just one person. It was several people coming together. This old woman who had barely money for her rent and would have $20 left over for the rest of the month felt so 
wonderful about this man finding that $500 that she wanted to give it to him. And him being so humble and grateful that he is, was like, no, I'm not going to do that. And not only am I not going to accept that money, but I'm going to donate some of my money. And then other people chimed in. And that's my whole point. My whole purpose in this is be the change is it's kind of like a domino effect. So like in this story, this man decides to do something good and others around, the other tellers hear about his goodness and decide to help chip in. And that's what I'm talking about. Other people will see you and say, hey, I want to do that too. And it'll be a domino effect. And just imagine how much better this world could be if we all did that, if we all did a little bit of change for the good and other people chipped in. Okay, last story. Uh, there is a Christian song that uh, my youngest daughter loves, loves, loves. I love it too. It's called We All Bleed the Same. And this is, it has to do with racism. Um, and this story kind of has to do with that. So let's get started. A 50-year-old something white woman arrived at her seat on a crowded flight and immediately did not want the seat. The seat went next to a black man. Disgusted, the woman immediately summoned the flight attendant and demanded a new seat. The woman said, I cannot sit here next to this black man. The flight attendant said, let me see if I can find another seat. After checking the flight attendant returned and stated, ma'am, there are no other seats in economy, but I will check with the captain and see if there is something in first class. About 10 minutes had passed and the flight attendant returned and stated the captain has confirmed that there is no seats in economy, but there is one seat left in first class. It is our company policy to never move someone from economy to first class, but being that it would be some sort of scandal to force a person to sit next to an unpleasant person, the captain agreed to make the switch to the first class. Before the woman can say anything, the attendant gestured to the black man and said, Therefore, sir, if you would kindly retrieve your personal items, we would love to move you to the comfort of first class at the, as the captain does not want you to sit next to an unpleasant person. Passengers in the seats nearby began to applaud while someone gave a standing ovation. Now that's where I want to share with you because I know that there is a lot of racism still going on in our world today and this just shows that if you see something going on you need to stick up and stand up for it you know this woman you know just because the color of somebody's skin was like I don't want to sit next to you that's absolutely absurd and ridiculous and the captain and the flight attendant were so gracious and said okay we're going to move the man to first class so he doesn't have to sit next to this obnoxious woman so uh, that's all I have for you today. My whole purpose is I want you to be the change that you want to see in the world. I know our world is kind of caca poo, poo right now and we want things to get better, but it's got to start somewhere, right? So it's got to start with you and with me. And like these stories show, you do something, people around you see it, and they want to do it. And it's just a domino effect. And hopefully we can make the world a much better place to live in. So until next time, I hope you have a wonderful weekend and stay safe.